Welcome to Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. The message you are about to hear is from the Lord's anointed Dr. Edward Irobi, the man with the mandate to proclaim the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and to raise an army for the Lord in this end time. You know, when we understand that our lives on earth, you know, is going to yield us a reward here and hereafter, then that will make us to have what I call reverence fear of the Lord. And unfortunately, this reverence fear of the Lord is one of the things that has departed from the church. And because of lack of reverence fear, you see pastors and deacons quarreling. You see members and the pastors having issues. You see different people in the church. And you begin to say, oh, People are saying that the Lord is coming soon and churches are having issues like this. What shall we do? Remember, the Lord wants you to know you yourself, you are responsible for your own, your own action. Forget about your pastor. Forget about the deacon. Don't look at them. Let them not make you to compromise your faith. I want you to understand. When you understand that, that will help you on this journey. So, we have seen the reward. We have seen the, a, a reward that uh, the Almighty pro, uh, pronounced uh, um, upon man due to their disobedience. Let's go very fast. The Jews in the wilderness. The Jews in the wilderness. You know, the Jews happen to be an uh, interesting uh, category of people, you know. <laughs> So the Lord loves this people so much, as we know. And we are so blessed that um, from the Jews, you know, we had um, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. It pleased him to come from that race. And uh, just a little journey. When they were in the wilderness, the Lord started dealing with them. The Lord started speaking to them through his spokesman, Moses. And the Lord provided, provided a lot of statutes, a lot of ordinances, a lot of laws. And the Lord started telling them, hey, you are responsible for this. You are responsible for that. If anybody kills someone accidentally, this is what I expect you to do. If anybody steals, this is what I expect him to do. If anybody does this or does, you know, the Lord provided the guidance. And the one all of us are aware of is what? The Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord assembled them through Moses saying, you are responsible for these Ten Commandments. I will use these Ten Commandments to judge you. I will use these Ten Commandments to bless you. I will use this Ten Commandment to see how you love me. Mm. I don't know the one the Lord is speaking to. All the responsibilities I've given to you, your ability to keep my word shows how you love me. Your ability to tremble before what I have been speaking to you and how you are running with the messages I've been giving to you will show how much you love me. Have you seen a wife that tells the husband, hey, honey, I love you. But the behavior does not show that she does. Have you seen a husband that tells the wife, hey, you are my wife, my sweet wife. I love you. I have left every other woman just for you. And he does not do what pleases the wife. And how would the wife take that? Have you seen the father that the children will say, hey, daddy, we love you. Nothing to show. Have you seen a mother that the daughters and sons will say, hey, mom, you are the best woman in the world. You are the best mom in the world. And the day after the, the woman will speak, nobody wants to respond to her call. She think that love is there. No, she will say, no, I don't think they love me. So what the Lord is saying, 
hear my word and you keep them. That's the way I will know that you love me. So the Lord gave the Jews the Ten Commandments. And when he gave them these Ten Commandments, he expected them to comply. Did they comply? You will see. So some of them kept the Ten Commandments and then we are blessed. Let's read the word of the Lord in the book of uh, Exodus chapter 10. We are not at uh, chapter 20. We are not going to finish um, 17 verses here. Let, let's just take a few of the verses and then we go back to uh, the other aspect before we hit the New Testament. So here we read, And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. That was the first commandment. I will use this thing to prove you. Hmm. That's another word. I, the, the other way I want you to see the commandment that the Lord gave to the Jews. I'm going to use this to see whether you love me. These are my instructions. These are my words. They are now your responsibility to keep. If you keep them, I know you love me. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandment. Then, verse 7, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who take his name in vain. So on and so forth. Ten commandments. He told them, these are your responsibilities. That's how you will prove that you love me. I will bless you here, as you could see what the Lord says. He said that he will, he will do what? Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children when they don't keep that responsibility. The Lord will say, okay, your father did not keep it. Now your children will suffer the punishment too. Now, oh, not only that, the Lord said, but show you mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandment. Oh, this man who has been keeping the commandment of the Lord, his children, generation after generation, will be blessed. Huh. So we are now seeing the components of blessedness of walking in obedience. It does not impact only you. It's a generational story. You know, I tell people sometimes about my mother-in-law. You know, it's not because she's my mother-in-law that I'm blowing this trumpet. You know? I have a nice mother-in-law. You know, and um, by the reason of her generosity, you know, when I see how generous by the reason of what I've been hearing about her being generous, I say, oh, maybe that's why God has blessed this woman so much. You know, because when you see, you know, my wife will always tell me when they were growing up, the dad will buy a lot of things and uh, within one week, so the food stuff is over. The, the mom had already distributed their own food stuff to those that were less privileged. And the dad would say, I thought that I bought this, you know, how many days ago? And looking, to, looking at the wife, he will know that, oh, my wife has done it again. He will bring out money again and buy another one. And as this woman was 
you know, going along in her life, now you can now see how God started blessing the children. I want to let you know. I can tell you how many of her children, her sons, her daughters, how the Lord has blessed them. And something came into my mind. Even her being alive, you know, being in a good state of health is by the reason of her obedience down the road. Your obedience can attract blessing of the Lord even for your children. So keep the responsibilities that the Lord has given to you. And the Lord will keep his promises he has spoken concerning you. So let's go. So the children of Israel, they had the Ten Commandments. A time came, the Lord said, okay, I gave you Ten Commandments. I want you to take into cognizance something else. That you are going to have either of these rewards while alive. I want you to hear me. That's why I've been emphasizing that the responsibilities that God has given to us will attract two types of reward here and hereafter. The Lord told the children of Israel, today I am presenting before you life. <laughs> and I am pre I'm presenting before you what? Death. He told Moses in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. But choose life that you may live. If you keep my ordinances, if you keep my commandments, if you do all the things I have spoken to you through my servant Moses, these blessings will come upon you and will overtake you. All the responsibilities I told you you're going to keep. If you fail in any of them, you don't want to repent and you are stiff-necked, I will bring these curses upon you while alive. So, you know, that, that, that's caused our attention to what's happening in our churches and in our individual lives as children of, uh, of the Lord. Somebody will say, brother, why is it that these people have suffered so much? I don't, you know, can't the Lord come to their rescue? I know that it is written that the poor will not finish from the land. Suffice it to say that there are behaviors that can attract poverty. There are behaviors that can attract punishment. And that's why the Lord wants to blow this trumpet. You are living in a chaotic world. Listen to my word. I am presenting before you life. I am presenting before you death. This is what you do. And the life of God will go after you. This is what you do. And death may befall you. Is the Lord not honest enough? We believe you have been blessed by this message. Please join us every Friday for our revival prayer meeting and on Sunday for our Bible study. You can also follow us on Facebook as Lovers of Jesus Ministries International. For prayers and can study, please call plus 147054017. You can also visit us on our website www.lgmhi.net. Remain blessed. Jesus is coming soon.